Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Jun from Confluent. In this module, we're going to talk about the Kafka's control plane. So in the previous module, we have talked about the data plane and how the client requests and the replications handled through the data plane. And in this module, we are going to talk about control plane, which manages the metadata of the cluster. The old way of managing the control plane is through Zookeeper. There is like one broker is picked as a special controller, and the controller is responsible for ma managing and changing the metadata of the whole cluster. The metadata is persisted in the consensus service, which is external Kafka that is called a Zookeeper. And the, the controller is, is also responsible for propagating the metadata changes to the rest of the broker. The new world of the control plane is implemented through a new module called KRAFT. Since, uh, we completely eliminate the dependency on Zookeeper. Instead, we have a built-in consensus service based on Raft within the Kafka cluster. In this case, you can see a few of the broker will be selected um, to build this uh, internal consensus service to manage and store the metadata. And this is a relatively new feature, so it's still just in preview. But since this is the future in this module, we are just only going to talk about the control plane based on KRAFT. Now, why do we build a new control plane using KRAD? Well, these are some of the main reasons. The number one reason is this makes the operation of Kafka a lot easier by removing the number of moving parts. Uh, earlier, you had, there are two separate systems, which is Kafka and Zookeeper, you have to manage. Right now, with KRAF, you just have one type of system that you have to deal with. This makes things like deployment, configuration, monitoring, security much easier and simpler than before. The second reason is the KRAFT model in general is much more efficient because we have this customized build consensus service just for Kafka. We can store and manage the metadata in a much more efficient way. So here in this figure, we have shown that in general with KRAFT model, we can achieve at least 10x uh, scalability improvements in terms of the amount of metadata it can handle within a cluster. KRAFT model also allows the metadata to be propagated from the controller to the brokers in a much more efficient way, as we'll see later on. When you configure a KRAFT-based controller, there are two ways you can configure it. The top one shows you that you can configure it in a non-overlapping way. You can pick some of the nodes as brokers and some other nodes dedicated as controller. If you have a smaller cluster, you can also choose to run in a shared mode. In this case, you can say some of the nodes will act both as the broker as well as the controller. Both setups are possible. So once we have selected those controllers in the cluster, we need a, the, those controllers need a way to communicate among themselves, and other brokers also need to communicate with the controller in order to propagate the metadata. So this is done through this configuration it provides a list of all the controllers and will include its endpoints, including the host name and the port. The active controller, as well as the other controllers, they each maintain an in-memory metadata cache. So this is actually pretty useful because if the active controller fails, the rest of the controller can take over as the new controller much quicker because it doesn't need to refresh its metadata because it has an up-to-date in-memory copy of all the metadata. This is actually one of the ways why uh, KRAFT is much more efficient than the old Zookeeper-based control plane. Once the active controller decides to change a particular metadata, we need a way to persist that metadata. And this is achieved through an internal built-in topic called class metadata. This is a very special topic. It only has a single partition, and it's used to persist all the metadata within this cluster. So for example here, when, if the controller wants to make a change to change the leader and in sync replica set for a particular partition, the first thing it needs to do is to write a metadata record into this metadata log. Then this data will be replicated to other controllers and or other brokers will also be replicating this metadata log to its local log. By keeping a ma ma local metadata log, this allows the broker to be able to keep up with the changes in a much more incremental way. For example, if the broker is restarted, it doesn't have to refresh all the metadata. You just have to catch up from what is missing since it's down. This is actually much more efficient than the Zookeeper way. Now, how is the metadata replicated in the KRAFT mode? The replication of the metadata is very similar 
to how the data is replicated. We had a similar concept as the leader and the followers, the data will be flowing first into the leader and then to the follower. And there's a similar concept of leader epoch and all the records will be tagged with the leader epoch as they are appended to the log. The leader of this metadata log is also the active controller and it's responsible for writing the data into, uh, into this replicated log. But there are some key differences of the metadata replication from the data replication. One of the key difference is the leader election and offset committing is completely different in the, in the KRAP mode because there's no concept of ISR or in sync replica set because we have no other consensus service that we can rely upon to persist this metadata. So instead, in KRAP mode, the leader election and uh, offset committing is all based on a quorum-based system, which we'll talk about a bit later. The second difference is in, this, in the KRAP mode, all the metadata record has to be persisted in the log. It has to be flushed to disk before they are exposed to be uh, before they can be considered committed. Now, let's look at, look at how the leader election works in the KRAP mode. Let's say in this case, the old leader on controller one failed, and then we would need to elect a new leader. In this case, since there's no concept of ISR, the remaining replicas, controller two and three, need to coordinate among themselves to select a new leader. So the way this works is each of this uh, follower will be first bumping up his epoch and then mark itself as a candidate. It will vote for itself for this particular epoch and it will send a vote request to all other replicas to request a vote for, from them. To, uh, to prevent the case where all the followers try to elect themselves at the same time, there's a little bit back off logic. So each of the, each of the candidate will back off to a random number and then uh, and makes themselves as a candidate. Let's say in this case, replica three is the one first get selected um, as a candidate. And then it will send this uh, vote request to other followers, including its candidate epoch, as well as a little bit of metadata about its log, which is what's the end offset of its log and the latest epoch it has. Once the other follower received this vote request, it will first check if it has seen any of the epoch higher than this epoch. If so, it will reject this request. Then it will check if it has already responded to this particular epoch. If so, it will just send the same response it has made before. In this case, it hasn't really made a response before. Then what this follower will do is to compare the candidate's log with its, its own log to see which one is longer. In this case, it will notice that the candidate's log has the same epoch, but has a longer offset than its local log. So in this case, it will notice that the candidate's log is at least as long as its own local log. It will actually vote a yes to this vote request. So once the candidate has collected enough votes, it will consider itself as the new leader. In this case, it has accumulated two out of three votes, so it can become the new leader. Once the new leader is selected, it will inform other replicas through another request to, not, to tell them that it is the new leader and they should be following them. Once the new leader is elected, we need a very similar log reconciliation process to make sure all the replicas are consistent. As you can see in this case, initially, the follower's data is a little bit inconsistent with the new leader because some of the records in this log are never committed. So in this case, what a follower will do is to go through a similar process as the data replication reconciliation logic by sending its epoch and, and offset, and eventually the follower's log will be truncated and made consistent as the leader. We need a way to prevent the metadata log from going forever. We can't simply just truncate all the data in the metadata log because it may still consist some of the latest value for some of the resources the cluster is managing. So instead, what we do is to use a concept called snapshot. So periodically, each of those controllers as well as the broker will take the latest records in the metadata cache and write that as a snapshot. Once the snapshot is written, uh, which is corresponding a particular end offset, we know all the records before that particular end offset in the metadata log is redundant. 
they are no longer needed. So at that point, once we generate a snapshot, we can start truncating some of the old data in this metadata log. The snapshot, together with the remaining of the metadata log, will still give us the latest metadata for the whole cluster. Now, how is the snapshot being used? Well, the snapshot is used in a couple of cases. Every time when the broker is restarted, it will need to rebuild this in-memory metadata cache. So it does that by first scan through the latest snapshot and load that into memory, followed by um, continuing fetching the data from the last offset associated with the snapshot from this metadata log. The second use case of the snapshot is when the controller or the broker is fetching the metadata from the leader's metadata log. So when sometimes when a fetch request is issued, the offset in the fetch request may no longer exist in the leader's metadata log because the leader may have truncated it after generating some of the latest snapshot. So in this case, the leader will be sending a response to the controller to follow to indicate that its offset is missing. You need to first catch up on the snapshot. So after receiving this response, the broker or the controller will first scan through the, will issue a request to scan through all the snapshot data from the leader. And after that, we'll be switching to consuming the data from the metadata log after the end offset associated with the, with the snapshot. So this concludes this particular module. Thanks for listening.